The great country of Pakistan, home to 184 million people. In August 2010, an appalling monsoon flood hit Pakistan, destroying, wrecking, devastating. Over 20.4 million people have been affected in this national disaster. Families lost mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, cousins, uncles, aunts. The head count went on and on. Crops waterlogged, animals drowned, the means of making a living all submerged. Homes wrecked, mud engulfed, strewn apart by the force of the water, reduced to rubble or even less. Devastation indeed. In the past, I've seen scenes of natural disaster around the world, pronounced United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, but nothing like this. Quickly, swiftly, without delay, the teams banded together and started to move out, visiting wherever possible. It was very difficult as roads had been submerged, others had been torn and ripped into distorted shape. Our vehicles went out, braving the difficulties and danger to meet families and those affected by the disaster. Oh, and Pakistan's heart is for people, hurting people, damaged people, needy people, God's creation in a disaster-struck world. We decided to help a select number of families who were in extreme need. We visited them again and again to understand their needs, not what we thought they needed. We made a three-stage plan. Stage one, emergency supplies of food packages and basic clothing. Stage two, essentials of winter clothing, cooking utensils, mosquito nets, and water filters. And then finally, stage three, reconstructing houses and restoring homes. At each visit, flood victims gratefully accepted our help. After a while, they began to look out for us, expecting us. We know that you will do what you say you will do. We trust you, they said. We saw that there was no point in bringing food if the people didn't even have clean water to drink and were just going to die of waterborne disease and dehydration. So we organized doctors to come into makeshift three-day camps to bring medicine and heal as best we could. After all, babies were still being born into these dreadful conditions. Those without homes had no structure to sleep in. The army rounded them up into internally displaced camps, but there wasn't enough food for them all. We began cooking there to bring hot meals as a short-term solution. But we realized we needed to think long-term. We sent our surveyors out again to see how we could help in the rebuilding process. Some were returning home as the water went down. How can we help them to begin to start their lives again? And so we began the rebuilding and reconstructing, brick by brick if necessary. Whole communities needed help, not just in housing, but in rebuilding livelihoods. We can't believe it was possible to have our home again, but you have made it possible, they said. We hope the future will look better for the people of Pakistan. The generosity of people around the world have made this possible.